Welcome back to episode two of the Subaru Impreza 2.5 RS build. Today we are gonna detail the entire car top to bottom. I like to do this on every car I get because you can see the dings, the dents, the scratches, um, rust, anything that needs to be repaired. So the first step is to wash and dry it, which we've already done. Now we're gonna start the decontamination process to get all the fallout, the iron deposits, all that stuff out of the paint. I'm gonna start with a chemical decontamination spray and then we're gonna move on to clay and we'll also move on to a clay mitt see which method works best after that we're gonna do some light compounding and some polishing and then finish it up with a wax and a sealant but first we got to get it outside and get the decontamination process started I'm gonna start with some car pro iron X this is the older stuff but I don't have very much maybe a third of the bottle left so we'll have to Probably move on to something else, like maybe some atoms or whatever I have laying around. This stuff's pretty nasty, so don't forget to wear gloves and a mask. See all these teeny tiny little specks? This car is littered with it. And I think I might actually want to do the wheel wells because they are a disaster. So before I get the paint all nice and pretty, I think I should pull the wheels and tires off and scrub and scrub and scrub. After one wheel well. Might need some degreaser in here. Boy, some stuff just gets neglected. I don't think this has ever been washed. A little better. In the trunk, pulling this stuff up, the weather strip, it does, look at how crusty that is. It doesn't look like this has ever been cleaned. And I'm peeling off all of this Dynamat foil junk that somebody decided to cover. I don't know why. Well, I found why there was all that metal stuff here. It looks like under the seal, I pull up the trunk seal, there is a hole here. And I mean, it looks like it's been treated with maybe some like rust inhibitor, but I mean, I don't understand why, because this ledge all the way around the car, under the seal, it's all super clean and super stout. There's no rusting. And then right here, I don't know if somebody cut that out intentional I mean it looks like rot but under here sorry it's really dark but I mean everything else is super I mean there's a little bit of surface rust in here but I mean it's not rot coming through the entire panel and then there's that hole I have no idea 
why there's that hole. And there's another one on this side. I don't know if somebody cut something out. You can see right here we have this le this ledge all the way and then boom, this notch. And then they put this foil tape on here to like direct the water, those two areas, and it's got to be just from water coming out of that channel there. And you can see a little bit of crusty stuff under this seam seal here. You can see the rest of the entire trunk lid is relatively clean. Uh, sorry, we're in the shadows here. Nothing really inside rusted, you know, little scratches here and there. I'm actually really sad about the rust that we discovered in the trunk. It's pretty discouraging. I gives me a bad gut feeling. I'll have to take it to the body shop to assess the damage. The car doesn't get driven in the rain. It's not a daily driver. I don't think it's getting any worse. But I know that top layer of metal does have to be cut and removed, peeled back to look inside. Um, I know it's up against the quarters there. It's kind of a sandwich of, I think, three panels. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to hope for the best. Maybe we'll address it later. But right now, there's a lot of other things that need to happen to the car. I'm just working on this corner of the hood. Just try to do a couple feet at a time. And you don't really want to pry, apply a lot of pressure on this. I mean, there's been millions of videos done. If you really want to look into it, you can spend hours researching videos on how to do it. But I just go back and forth. Make sure you know it's not sticking if the clay is new. Um, you could break it in on like the windows. So most places or well, most companies ask you to do. Yeah, just look look at all that stuff it's pulling out. I think white cars are the the most easy to see the stuff coming out. They usually get pretty dirty. So that's just that section and just continue. Do every painted surface and glass surface till the whole car is done. Do you hear that? It sounds terrible. A lot of times they get hooks get snagged on like chips and scratches. But it just doesn't sound pleasant. Does it? Your paint. Careful, go nice and easy back and forth. Not a lot of pressure. Side skirts have been removed from the vehicle. I wanted to do some more inspection and look and see how the rockers of the GC are. Actually, they're in really good shape. Um, we'll get under the car in a second. I did clean up everything, polish it, clay bar it. And I also did the door jams, which if you've never detailed the door jam on your vehicle, uh, I don't know if I recommend it. It kind of sucks. These gaskets go here. No longer available at Subaru, of course, but these are both in really good shape for this car. I am missing one of these seals that goes between the side skirt and the body of the car. You can get them aftermarket now. I think Roger Clark Motorsports sells them maybe another place in the UK. But... Let's look at the seals here. They are relatively rust free. These tend to rot out really bad on these cars. Uh, fortunately, the jacking points are pretty smushed on the front and also the back. You can see where someone probably had a, the wrong jack stand or something up there and it pushed into the seal a little bit, but I don't think I've ever seen one of these cars with clean jacking points. I hate that they have the frame pinch wheels as one of the jacking points of this car. I never lift it up, and I recommend that you don't lift up the vehicle from the jacking points either. Now that we've completely clay barred and clay mitted and decontaminated the paint, it still needs work. There's a lot of iron deposits still in the paint, so we're gonna take it outside, do another round of the chemical decontamination of the whole entire vehicle, 
The back bumper is terrible. I don't even know if that's gonna come out. So let's get it outside. We're gonna do another round of spray, maybe agitate it with a mitt, but we really gotta do something to get all the contamination out of this vehicle. Okay, I already did the wash and rinse the front with the second round. I, this time I use Adam's iron out. And this is just the second time. You can see, it's still pulling out a lot of iron. I don't know how many times do we do it? Two or three? Seems like I go through a bottle of this stuff every time I apply it. She is being very stubborn, but we've decontaminated it twice now with chemicals and the clay bar and the clay mitt. And I don't really have any more energy to do any more decontamination. So moving on to the compounding phase, I don't want to compound the entire car because the paint is actually in pretty good shape. It's still shiny. There's certain pieces like the hood, the bumpers, the mirrors that are kind of um, oxidized because they're plastic material versus the metal of the panels of the car. So we might have to use a little bit of um, compounding on those areas, but I want to be careful. I don't want to burn through the paint. I don't want to damage it. The clear coat is still there. It's not faded like 95% of these vehicles that you see. So the goal is to polish the entire vehicle with a polish and use compound on areas that are heavily oxidized or scratched that need a little bit more work. So let's get that started. Okay, I just finished up a few passes on the hood scoop and there is a line right here. So I'm gonna try my best to show you. Look at the reflection. This is after, before, after. You see that line right there in the center of the screen? So this side has been polished, this side has not. Let me get another light. Now that the polish and the compound is completely done on the entire car, we need to pull it back out and rewash it and get all the compound and the dust off. You can see it on the window here. That's just dust from compounding and polishing. We move on to the sealant phase. This is the Jaskar Power Lock Plus. It might be named something new now. And Colonite, it's just like a Carnuba kind of topical wax. Good stuff, budget. It'll probably get a couple months of shine and glistening out of this. I'm probably not going to do this. Honestly, once I do this power lock to the whole car, let it sit, buff it off, I don't think I'm gonna wanna go back and do it again. So, I'm gonna use this Adams Hex Grip applicator pad. They're pretty cool because they're bigger and you don't have to just use your fingers and pinch a little pad. You just kinda grip it and move it around. Okay, final step for now. Let's get some sealing on this thing. And that's gonna be a wrap for today because I am tired of polishing and cleaning this vehicle. So it has been decontaminated, it is shiny, it is sealed, and that's about all the energy and time I have to give. So next episode, we're gonna start moving on to the interior and fixing a few things in there. And then we're gonna move on to the mechanicals of the vehicle and get it running in tip top shape so I can enjoy it rather than it just sitting here as a stable mate next to the black one. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.